All right, guys, we're about to find and identify the critical points to this curve right over here. As you can see, it's in red and it's undulating up and down across here. And we've got letters at critical points right over here, starting at A, B, C, D, E, all the way to F. Now we have a domain, it's a restricted domain. It's from a negative three is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to three. So within that domain, you can see the two endpoints there, here in dotted blue and dotted blue on the other side over there. So what we're after is to find these critical points. What we're after, first of all, is what is the global minimum? That means the overall minimum. So as you look at that, the global minimum will be, well, what's the lowest point in that restricted area from negative three to positive three? Well, it's going to be down, 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 not here, but even lower, we come all the way down there at the point A. So that's gonna be our global minimum A. So let me write down A right over there. Now let's look for the global maximum, meaning what's the highest? It's not here and it's not here. It goes all the way up there. That's our global maximum. That's F right over here. Now, mind you, some textbooks don't use the word global at all, they use the word absolute. So just in case, I'm gonna reveal that for you. Absolute means exactly the same thing as global, depending on your textbook. So let me just put the arrow there. Global and absolute means exactly the same thing. So right over here at A, we have an absolute minimum, and over here at F, we have an absolute maximum. So that's within that criteria. So now let's look for the local points we have here we're looking for a local minimum. The local minimum is going to be not the lowest, not the highest, but locally, it would have to be point D over here. So let me fill it in here. Local minimum is D right there. Okay, let's go for the next point, the local maximum. The local maximum is that, it's actually here B. Local maximum right there. So let's put that in there. Now again, depending on your textbook, there's another word for local. Some teachers in textbooks refer to local as relative. So it could be a relative minimum. So this over here is a relative minimum, and this over here is a relative maximum right there at B. So let me just put a narrow in here. Local is the same as relative. So we got those points, but there are another two more points we can discuss here, and they are the inflection points. First of all, let's have a look at this inflection point right over here. Now, an inflection point is where you get a change in curvature or shape in the actual curve. So you'll notice here that it goes from concave down, and right here changes and changes to concave up. So it's, we've got these two sections here and the point of change is right there. And that's referred to as the inflection point right there. And it's a normal inflection point. Now there's another type of inflection point and we have it right here. That inflection point actually, when you get the first derivative, it's actually going to be a stationary point. So it's referred to as a stationary point of inflection, or sometimes referred to as SPI, stationary point of inflection. Sometimes it's also referred to as horizontal point of inflection. Right over there. Why is it a horizontal point of inflection? Because if you grab the tangent, if you get the tangent of the slope right at that point, it's actually horizontal there, the slope. The actual tangent to that specific point right over there. So there are all of those points, and we're gonna be doing some more examples coming up soon.